have a decent sized collection of video games ranging from Atari 2600 all the way up to the PlayStation 5. And I've been collecting for a very long time. And now that I have a permanent space, I've come to the conclusion that I have too much stuff. One of the biggest challenges of collecting video games is finding a place to put all of it. Maybe you want to display it all around the room, cramming as much as you can onto shelves that are only meant to hold a fraction of those games. Maybe you have an entire house dedicated to displaying everything, or maybe you have the bulk of it packed away in a storage unit. For me, I have one room and one room only to house my game collection, and after two years I finally mustered up the courage to sell off some of it. And it was easier than I thought it would be. To get it out of the way, no, I'm not selling everything, I just things that I feel that I could get rid of and not miss, and that's the biggest hurdle to cross when selling. Last year, when the PlayStation game prices were spiking hard, I got 12 games that were super expensive that would have netted me about 1200 bucks. and after the first one sold, I immediately regretted it, cancelled the sale, and decided to not to sell again. But this time I was ready to get rid of some stuff that I no longer wanted and was still valuable. The reason being is because my wife and I we spent 6 weeks in Denver and I only brought my Nintendo Switch, Mr. and Analog Pocket and I only played the Pocket. After being away from my collection for that long, I came to the realization that if I wanted to clear up some space, I could stand to separate myself from some of the collection. The thing that I did first was organize my closet. I moved some boxes out to the top shelf of my room and it turns out that empty boxes account for a lot of space. Some of these are completely empty so smaller boxes fit inside maximizing that space. And sure it looks a little crowded but I like the way that it looks. So what did I decide to get rid of? Well here's a running list. There's 16 items in total and it's mostly redundant stuff in my collection like the analog Mega SG and Super NT. I bought those thinking that I would use them a lot like my NT Mini Noir, but I mostly play on the CRT and when you get something like HD Retrovision cables, the picture looks identical to the analog on CRT. Plus if I ever want to play on a modern TV, I have the Mister, so those were up for sale. Next up is the JVC XI. It's a Genesis and Sega CD combo with two official JVC controllers. And the drawback of this one is that it doesn't work. It powers on, you can hear the sound, but no audio. The CD drive didn't work either, and I thought that I could take on the project, but it's just outside of my skill set. Speaking of projects that are outside of my skill set, the Vectrex. It powers on, has sound, and doesn't show video. Well, it did show video at one point, but it turns off after a while. I tried to get it fixed, but the person couldn't pull it off. So that gets sold not only because it doesn't work, but I just don't know where to put it. Turbo Graphics 16. I only have one game for this system. I don't play it, and the games are crazy expensive. I actually, this is one of the very first consoles that I bought when I started collecting, and I just never got into it. So it's up for sale. The Commodore 64 with a floppy drive. I have no nostalgia for this system. I got it for 50 bucks locally, and I just couldn't get into it. I even went so far as to buy a modern power supply so it wouldn't explode. And now that I have an Apple IIe that I did grow up with, my 8-bit computer itch has been scratched. So mostly systems up for sale, but are there any games? Well. Mostly Collector's Edition, Celeste Collector's Edition, and while it is a good game, it's just not for me. I'm not super jazzed about it myself. I played it on PC and the Switch, and I just couldn't get into it. So I could stand to get rid of this one since now it's worth a lot of money. Same with Octopath Traveler Wayfarer Edition and the Super Smash Bros. Wii U controller bundle. Big box games that I thought I would get into, but didn't. So, they need to go. Axiom Verge Multiverse Edition, Shakedown Hawaii, and Devil's Third. I kind of want to keep Devil's Third, but if somebody wants to pay $400, then I'll part with it. And last, and kind of least, 
Keyboard Mania. I don't have a Japanese PS2. I am in the process of modding one, but I don't really care for rhythm games and it takes up a lot of space. And I got it for free, so away it goes. Now I just need to price this stuff. Now the prices, since I do run Retronomics, I should know what things are going for. And so my prices are at or around what price charting has them listed for. And usually I look at price charting, then I see what people have it listed for on eBay, and then I dial it back accordingly. I price them for less on Facebook Marketplace if they would pick up locally. I'm not in a hurry to sell, but I still want to sell my stuff. And here's what I listed all of the prices at. Now where to sell them. I wanted to sell them as fast as I could and not have to bother with shipping. So I reached out to a game store to see what they would offer and they didn't offer me a lot. $1,300 for everything. Well, not everything because the Vectrex and the XI are broken, they wouldn't accept it. And there aren't too many stores that offer to fix this stuff, much less accept them. So I did get a good baseline of what I could get if I didn't price anything out, but I want to at least get close to what price charting has it listed as. I put my stuff on five different sites, Facebook Marketplace, PriceCharting.com, YouTube, Reddit, and Twitter. Price charting and Reddit didn't really get any bites and actually when I went to post on price charting's marketplace there was a game that I had posted a year and a half ago that I just forgot about. I put up Celeste to test the waters but after a week it just didn't move and Reddit I did get some inquiries and people wanted pictures but didn't end up making me any offers. And YouTube I just posted what I posted on Reddit to draw people to my Twitter post and I did actually wind up selling the Vectrex to somebody who reached out to me on Instagram which I keep forgetting that I have an account on. The Vectrex sold for $250 and I made shipping included. It cost me $40 for shipping so I netted $210. I only paid $80 for this knowing that it was broken so I kind of made some money. Now on to the bulk of sales, Facebook Marketplace is first, and I know that the Zuck sucks, but he essentially killed off the Craigslist vibe in Chicago, so Facebook Marketplace is the easiest way to sell locally, and man does it suck. First off, it's full of scammers. I didn't offer shipping at first, so any item that I listed for over $200 was immediately met with people who asked if it was still available, how long I had it, and then offered to pay me via Zelle and then have their brother pick it up because they were out of town. Shouldn't have to be said, but these are obvious scams. Zelle is through your bank and it's an ACH transfer, and once that money leaves your account, it's gone for good. There are a number of ways that they can do this. Mostly they ask for your email and then they send an official looking invoice from the bank saying that your account is locked with a phishing link or that says that they sent you too much money and they want you to refund the money or they get you to send the item without paying. So just keep your head on a swivel. Those who were real weren't much better. I got a lot of lowball offers. The JVC XI got the most. It needs work, but the controllers work just fine. And somebody wanted to pay $200 for everything because it would need at least $100 worth of work. And sold ones on eBay in the same condition for just the console were going for $200 and consoles were going for $50 each. And I had it listed for 340 with the expectation that people would want to haggle, but that offer was too low, so I rejected it. Then they offered to trade. Now, I'm trying to get rid of stuff and not add any more to my collection, so if you're going to trade with me, you got to have something good. And also, in my experience, when trading, everybody wants fair market value for their stuff, but they don't want to pay fair market value for your stuff. So if you have your eye on a Super Smash Brothers in the box for the Nintendo 64, for example, they might want to do an even trade for Conker's Bad Fur Day complete in the box. And if you look at the price discrepancy, it's you can buy three or four Super Smash Brothers for one Conker's Bad Fur Day. But I would at least be swayed if they had some Atari Lynx stuff. And I'm going for a complete set of Atari Lynx and 
I don't come across link stuff very often. And what do you know? The guy had link stuff. A CIB links to and like 10 games complete in the box. Some games I don't have. So I say, sure, I'll trade you and we can trade for those links games. And then they say, well, you know what? Actually, I'm not interested in letting it go. And then they ghosted me. So that was the end of that story. I was able to sell the JVC XI for $340 cash. I had to bring it downtown and I threw in an NES action set box as well. So I'm really glad that I got the price that I was asking on that one. I also sold Final Fantasy XI with the hard drive for the PlayStation 2 and I had to ship that one, but that's fine. And finally, the place where I sold the majority of my games, Twitter. Yes, Twitter. Now I get the reservations that people have about paying somebody on a site that doesn't offer consumer protection, but it's not like my account just popped up out of nowhere. I had the Super Nintendo account for five years and I have 2,500 followers, which isn't a lot, but it is attached to my YouTube channel. So I do have somewhat of a reputation to maintain. And some people I just met up in person. The Octopath Traveler Wayfair Edition was sold to somebody who was close to me in Chicago. Davey, a mutual follow, was in town for a week, so we met up for some beers and I sold him Super Smash Bros. Wii U controller bundle. And PK in the Universe bought my black Wii. I shipped the rest of the stuff, the Super NT Turbo Graphics 16 and Celeste Collector's Edition. So. Total, so far as of the recording in this video, I have sold $1,500 worth of stuff and I still have some stuff to sell. Now you might be asking, why didn't I just try eBay? And that's a good question. I try to avoid eBay at all costs. They take 15% from every sale and PayPal takes another three. And now with eBay taking the majority of the payments, you do have to wait a little bit to get a payout. And I've been scammed as a seller on eBay before. In 2008, I sold my Wii and all of my games for like $600 or something, which was really nice money for the Wii at the time. It was actually the last Christmas that you couldn't find the Wii anywhere. And I take really good care of my stuff, so I had no doubt that the person who bought it would be pleased with their purchase. And I was wrong. The person claimed a chargeback on my PayPal, who then made my account negative. I never leave money in these accounts, and after a two month back and forth with the buyer, I was able to get my Wii back. And ever since then, I've been really weary about putting up high dollar items on eBay, especially things that are difficult to find. However, I have sold some stuff since then, and I have put up items that I haven't sold on Twitter or Reddit or anywhere else on eBay where you can go and buy right now if you choose. There's other sites that you can sell stuff on like Mercari and whatnot, and I don't have any experience with Mercari and I don't really want to start. And I do not have a strong enough of a following to consider applying to be a seller on whatnot. I mean, there are some people with 12 views and such, but I don't think that it would be able to be worth my time. But let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a whatnot stream from me. Now that I've sold most of my stuff, do I regret selling it? And I've struggled with selling my stuff for a long time, like I mentioned in the top of the video. And the main question is, what if I want to play it at a later time? And I gotta say, I only regret not selling it sooner when the prices were higher and people were more willing to just buy stuff. It does figure that I sold my Super NT and then I RGB modded my one chip and now I want to do a comparison, but I do have the mister so I'll do that instead. But that's really the only reservation that I had about selling my stuff. Once the money started rolling in and fast, I didn't really have any hesitation of taking the stuff and packing it nicely and shipping it off to a new home to somebody who would enjoy it more than I would. I actually do plan on selling some more stuff actually. The closet still isn't 100% to my liking, but that will come at a later time. And what does matter is that my room is finally somewhat clean so I can finally sit down in my chair and watch TV without having to move a mountain of clutter to the other end of the room. 
So that's going to do it for this video. What do you think about me selling stuff? Do you think that I'll regret it later or will it be a slippery slope that I end up selling my entire collection? If you like this video, give it a like and share it with those who might find it interesting. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Snicktendo. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Super Nintendo and I'll see you next time.